Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is our first episode of our best gaming PC build 2024 series and it's February. We have seen four, four new GPUs launch and we've seen some big price cuts across the GPU market and component prices continue to go down, making 2024 another great year to build a gaming PC. We've got three amazing builds in this video. A $750 1440p gaming PC build that's absolutely gonna rock. A 240Hz 1440p gaming PC build for just $1,200. And then we've got a mega $1,900 4K premium build with an RTX 4070 Ti Super. Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. Hey, with that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, Use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD key and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Let's jump into that $750 1440p gaming PC build in 2024. That's right, $750 1440p. You're gonna get at least 60 FPS and some of these GPUs I'm gonna show you, you can do quite a bit better than that. Let's talk a little bit about the overall build though, because you can actually do this for around $700. We'll show you some ways to kind of cut some corners if you don't have quite that much money. And I will say, I just hit refresh on this thing. The SSD price popped up to $56, and that is actually the cheapest one terabyte NVMe SSD out there. So yeah, if you're thinking about building a gaming PC in 2024, I wouldn't wait too long, especially if all the GPUs are out, the mostly the CPUs out, but the SSD and the RAM prices are more than likely gonna keep going up, and they've gone up pretty steeply. Let's jump in this build. Let's start off, where else the GPU? You're gonna have four different options right now at least at the beginning of 2024. I wanna start with the one that I really strongly prefer. That is the RX 6700 XT, 12 gigabyte GPU. There's also the 6750 XT, 12 gigabyte GPU. $335 up to about $370. Now I've allocated $330 for the GPU because some of the GPUs are a little bit cheaper, but this is the one I would pull the trigger on, probably going away in the, at least in the US pretty quickly. The GPU that's replacing it and I've actually used in the build itself is the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte, $329. You actually get a pretty good card for this. I, I'm not enthralled with $329, but Honestly, $750 build, 10, 20 bucks one way or the other is not gonna kill you on the GPU. And this does have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. You know, is it gonna be useful versus a 12? We can argue about that but it does have AV1 encoding. And while AV1 encoding is not widespread right now as a time I'm filming this, widespread support should be hitting this year in 2024. So we should see that on Twitch, we should see it on YouTube, et cetera. On the Intel side, you've got the ARC A770, just something to consider. It does have 16 gigs of VRAM. It's about $300. You can find a couple of different models in there. In fact, that Bifrost one often comes down to like $279, $100 off at times. So just keep your eye on that. I will say ARC, another massive driver update, another massive bump in terms of their performance, but you know, there's still a little bit of fussy cards and day one game support, not quite there yet. Of course, on the NVIDIA options, you just don't have much at this price point because their cheapest 16 or 12 plus gigabyte GPU is the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. It's $280 to $300. And then you got to go up to almost $450 for the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. But this is your NVIDIA option. They're still out there if you want them. Let's talk about those GPUs in terms of their performance. Let's start off with the lowest performance one, which is the RTX 3060. Now this is TechSpot 7600 XT review. So relatively fresh data. And this is a 12 game average at 1440p across a wide range of titles that are pretty tough to run at ultra settings. So you can always turn, turn things down to high. Of course, this is think of this as your like minimum FPS you're gonna get. Most titles are gonna get quite a bit more. The RTX 3060, good for just about 60 FPS down there. 12 gigs of VRAM, I do like it there, especially over the 6650 XT, which is only eight gigs of VRAM. But coming up, we got the ARC A770, 63 average FPS, no slouch, pretty good 1% lows as well. 52 there, but I really do like that 6700 XT, 76 average FPS, 64 and 1% lows, kind of just different performance here than everything else, but it is selling through. It may not exist much longer, at least new. You probably continue to find it used. And then we've got the 7600 XT, 67 average FPS, not that far away, 
57 on the 1% lows. Look at the difference on the 1% lows between the 7600 XT, the 7600 with eight gigabytes and the RTX 4060 with only eight gigabytes. It's a gulf, an absolute gulf. Do not buy eight gigabyte GPUs in 2024, especially for 1440p gaming. Let's jump through the rest of the build. Now, honestly, the best CPU for gaming right now at the budget level continues to be the Ryzen 5600 for $131 after the promo code here. That is an insane value. Yes, you could look at the i5-12400F it's about 20 bucks more. And then the B660 motherboards are also more and it's the same performance. I would stick with this. This is an insanely performative gaming CPU. You can save a little bit of money here by going like with the Ryzen 5500 or the i3 1200F. I probably would spend the 40 or $50. You're gonna see the level of performance at the GPUs that we're talking about here. And it comes with an included stock cooler that's absolutely adequate for it. And that's what we're gonna go with today. For the motherboard, unfortunately, my favorite board seems to be sold out right now, which is the ASRock. B550M Pro 4. However, the Gigabyte B550M DS3HAC, that means it comes with Wi-Fi on the board, $99 right now, absolutely great board. In the future, you can put a 5700X 3D, a 5800X 3D on this board as well. You can get going right now for $99. For the RAM, we're not gonna do anything special here. It's just DDR4 3200 CL16. If you wanna spend 15 more dollars, there's a G-Skill kit I'll link down in the video description. That's 3600 CL16. Give you a very slight bump in performance. Honestly, I'd probably put it into replacing the stock cooler instead, but this is a great kit of RAM. You can get the RGB version for not much more. For the drive, you can you just want to get the cheapest NVMe SSD you can right now. I, that's the crucial P3. Honestly, these drives are going up in price pretty rapidly. This drive and similar drives last year, I'm not even that far last year, but like as recently as the holidays and Black Friday, we're going for like 40 bucks, sometimes down in the $30 range. So they've almost, I want to say, come up like 50, 60% in price. And we are expecting and we are being warned that the SSD and RAM prices probably will see yet another bump in prices. So if you need an SSD for your build, I would go ahead and pick one up. For the case, I went with the BitPhoenix Nova Mesh, amazing case. It's got three included ARGB fans. You can get it either all white or all black. And it comes with a mesh front panel. It comes with a great top. We did our 7600 and 7800 XT build in this recently, and it's a phenomenal case. I just can't understand how they make this so cheap. For the power supply, I just went with the MSI Mag A550B, and that's 550 watt, $49. You can get the 650 watt for like 10 bucks more if you wanna just kinda leave yourself a little bit of headroom in the future to pick up a bigger CPU or GPU combo. But this is phenomenal value right now for $49. It's C tier rated on the PSU cultist list. Not much more to say other than grab it. So all told, there's our 700, well now $760, 1440p gaming PC build. Depending on the GPU you pick and the CPU you pick, this can go as little as like $680 or it can go up just a little bit to more like $775. Either way, you're getting a phenomenally performative 1440p gaming PC in 2024. Let's jump through some great gaming monitors deals budget 1440p game monitors in 2024 if you haven't watched our best gaming monitor 2024 video we go through all this but let me pick out a couple of my absolute favorites right now especially if you're doing that 750 dollars build or 700 dollars version of it these are great monitors to pair with it because they're so cheap but they're so performative starting off with the asrock phantom i'm not going to say all that nonsense up there it's a curved va 1440p 165 hertz panel it's been reviewed it's absolutely phenomenal it's very bright 550 nits by the way it comes with cable management too it comes with a wi-fi antenna it basically asrock is this is their first generation of gaming monitors. They're buying name recognition by selling these things probably below cost right now. So check these monitors out. They are phenomenal values. Of course, if you're looking for flat IPS instead, my recommendation at the budget level continues to be the Acer Nitro XV271U, $199. It's It was come up just about 10 bucks from where it was at 189, but 199 is still an automatic buy especially if you're on a budget and you want flat IPS. I will only say this about it, it's it's 250 nits of brightness. If you feel like that's not quite enough for you, there's a 300 nit version, it's the XV272U, but it's gonna cost you another 40 bucks. So if you can live without that, I'd, I'd pocket the money. I'll leave both of them linked down in the video description. Either one is a phenomenal value. Let's jump in that $1,150 1440p 240Hz gaming PC build in 2024. Uh, let's just call it $1,200 1440p 240Hz 2024 gaming PC build because honestly, I see a couple of deals in here that may not be live when you go to buy this stuff. 
So I'm gonna give you about $45 basically to kind of come up to that $1,200. At $1,200, it's a phenomenal performer. Absolutely phenomenal performer. You will not find better. Let's start off where else? Let's start off with the GPU. Honestly, to me at this price point, you really have one option if you haven't seen our best GPU for gaming 2024 video. We go through this in great detail, but at about the $500-ish dollar price point, get an RX 7800 XT 16 gigabyte. Just don't even consider the 4070. Look, if you absolutely have to have NVIDIA for whatever reason, I would probably pick up the 4070 or 4070 Super as my alternative. It just feels really bad to only get 12 gigs of VRAM for about five to $600 in 2024, especially when you know games like Alan Wake 2 and other on-release titles may eat up more than 12 gigs of VRAM, even at 1440p on high settings on release. Now, eventually, some of these games do get patched and the VRAM usage gets optimized and goes down. But you, when the game comes out, you wanna be able to play it and 16 gigs of VRAM is gonna give you that freedom right now. I really like the Gigabyte Gaming OC one. That's the one we have. That's the one that Tech Testers, separate outlet, tested and found that is probably one of the better performers in terms of the cooler. You have a lot more overclocking headroom if you actually wanna go ahead and overclock it there. And it's MSRP model too. So it's just kind of all around a great one. The Azrock Challenger one looks really nice though. It's got some tasteful RGB on it. It's a two fan, slightly shorter model. There's a number of these you can pick up right around for up $499 up to about $520, depending on if you want the, like the white one, the Azrock one, things like that. Let's talk about performance because it, it's basically going up against the RTX 4070 Super and the 4070. The 4070 Super right now selling for 600 bucks, basically $100 more. And the 4070 non-Super still selling for like $40 or $50 more than the 7800 XT, which to me is just bonkers. It should be a cheaper GPU. It's got less VRAM, it has less performance. I don't know what NVIDIA is really trying to pull there other than the 4060 Ti would also have to drop in price as well. And I don't think they want to reshuffle all those prices right now. This is TechSpot's RTX 4070 Super Review. So very, very fresh data here. You can see the 4070 Super, yes. Rasterized performance, slightly outperforms, actually pretty decently on the 7800 XT, it's about 12%. But again, the 12 gigs of VRAM is the real problem with the 4070 Super, just like it was with the 4070 Ti. There's nothing wrong with the 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte performance in terms of the frames it can push. The problem is when it exceeds the VRAM buffer, you introduce an artificial bottleneck there and games either crash or they don't load textures, or you're just not gonna be able to get the same gaming experience. And it's kind of frustrating because it could have been easily avoided by adding more VRAM to these GPUs, but this is the market we have. And I would go with the 7800 XT here. These are hard to run titles at ultra settings, like the last is part one. You're getting almost hundred FPS, even at those crazy, crazy settings, you're gonna to get tons and tons of frames with titles like CSGO and other kinds of first person shooters out there. All right, let's punch through the rest of the build. Honestly, the Horizon 7600 or 7600X, whichever one is cheaper, we're gonna do away with the included stock coolers to don't even worry about getting the stock cooler, not getting it. Right now, unfortunately, it was at Amazon. It is sold out at Amazon at $199. You can't even get it shipped from Amazon or sold from Amazon right now. Back ordered at Newegg. I'm fingers crossed you can get this. The 7600X is just about $20 more. So again, I've given you a little bit of cushion. This is a phenomenal performative gaming CPU. This is really what I would get. The 13600K, the 14600K have gone back up in price. They're almost $300. Not worth it. Absolutely not worth it unless you need a hybrid gaming system and massive production, professional level production machine. Otherwise, 7600 is also very capable at any of those tasks as well. Way more than the 5600 or any of the previous six cores. This is the gaming CPU that I would focus in on. 7800X3 to me, it's almost $200 more. That's money you could dump into your GPU. I probably would stay away from that at this price point, you can always upgrade to an 8800X or 9800X 3D whenever they come out, either later this year or later next year. We are gonna do away with that included stock cooler. It's just basically not really gonna cut it for the 7600. It's okay, but for 20 bucks, come on, $20, let's get this. I've done the all white thing, by the way, the Thermorite Assassin 120SE. Uh, obviously, the, the, all the stuff that I'm gonna show you also comes in black if you wanna go uh, a different direction on that. I just happen to like all white builds because that's the one that we recently built. This is a great, a phenomenal cooler. $20. If you want to go uh, alternatives out there, I'll list a couple down in the video description as well. Like the Deep Cool AG uh, 400, all white one that we used. I really like that cooler as well. For the motherboard, there's a lot of really good B650 options right now, anywhere from about $120 up to about $160. I went ahead and went with the ASRock B650M Pro RS. Now, the Wi Fi version of this, unfortunately, it looks like it literally just sold out as I started to film this because I was going to go with that. It was only $10 
$10 more for $139. But for $129, you can do this. Otherwise, you can always get a Wi-Fi dongle on, and I'm sure that board will come back into stock. But this is this phenomenal one, especially if you don't need Wi-Fi. It's got tons of rear panel connectivity to it. it. The VRMs are super solid. You will be able to put a super high core count CPU on this in the future. It's got the bio slash back for you. Pretty much it's got everything that you need. For the RAM, hey, look at this. Silicon Power DDR5 32 gigabyte kit. Now this is 6,000 CL 30 speed. This is what you wanna get. And it's an RGB kit. It's nice tasteful white kit. The team group kit that I often recommend right now is more like $110. You can also look for, there's a G-Skill uh, kit as well, the Trident Neo Z5 out there, also with RGB, another great kit for about $112. So anywhere between about $100 and about $115, you can find a number of DDR5, 6000, CL30, 32 gigabyte kits, and that's what I would grab. For the drive, again, I'm just going cheap on the NVMe here. There's no reason to do anything other than that if you're just gaming. If you're gonna do super high level performance stuff, then yes, invest more in your SSD. Otherwise, when SSD prices go up like this and there's a big gap between the higher performance and regular performance ones, I don't see any reason to spend the extra money if once it exceeds like 20, 30, $40, the Crucial P3 is plenty, one terabyte. For gaming, you will never notice the difference. For the case, look, you have a lot of options here for the micro ATX form factor. I really do like the Deep Cool CC360. I think it's a cool looking case. Bit Phoenix Nova Mesh that we just did in our previous build, also an option here. Three included ARGB fans, glass side panel to it. It's got good build quality, good airflow to it. Overall, just a really nice case for about 60 bucks. For the PSU, good news is these are lower power draw components. I mean, the 7800 XT does draw more power than the 4070, but the 76 600, Ryzen 7600, really, really super power efficient CPU. You really only need about 650 watts, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, 650 watts just seems to not be really there in the market. I was looking for B tier or A tier on the PSU Cultus list. I found the Gigabyte uh, UD750GM, very good units, B tier rated. It's not PCIe Gen 5 or anything like that, but you don't need that for this build. I would just pick this up for $85. So there it is, all told $1,155 right now. And again, if, if the CPU discount isn't there and you gotta spend another 20 or 30 bucks on that, some of the other discounts aren't there, you could probably get this done easily for $1,200. And you're gonna get a phenomenally performative 1440p gaming PC capable of driving 240 hertz in all those competitive titles at competitive settings at 1440p, which is really, really insane for 2024, especially when you think about how far we've come. $1,200 just a couple of years ago would not have got you anywhere near this level of performance. So for me, two thumbs up. Let's jump into some great 1440p 240 hertz gaming monitor deals right now. Now, honestly, the 240 hertz continues to just be all over the place, but there are some really good values right now. And I absolutely love the AOC CQ27G3Z, 27 inch, 1440p, 240 hz curved VA panel. Really reminiscent to the Samsung Odyssey G7, which I used to call the best gaming monitor on the planet. Just really, really nice motion handling, great color gamut to it. 299, so tough to beat. If you are looking for flat IPS, good news is the Gigabyte M27Q-X back at its normal price of 399 had been sold out forever since it came into stock. And honestly, its competitors right now are also kind of all sold out. So you really can't find any flat IPS much less than $400. That's not a bad price right now for it. And I'd probably pick it up for that. If you're looking for something even more premium, yeah, the Samsung Odyssey G6 has replaced the Odyssey G7 in its lineup. Basically, it's the 240 Hertz curved VA panel. It's got amazing motion handling. It's got the great response time times to it, and it's got everything that made the G7 really, really good. I, there's some slight panel differences, really nothing to write home about. 449, you can actually pick up the 32 inch version for $490. That's maybe the best value. Let's jump to that $1,900 4K premium build in 2024. And you are gonna get amazing frame rates. You're gonna get amazing visuals from this for, and I finished out at $1,874, so about $25 difference. Now this is a super premium build. It's got liquid cooling, it's got other things. I'll show you some areas if you wanna shave off about $100, you could do that pretty easily here, including at the GPU, you may even shave off another $100. I'll show you that in just a moment. In fact. Let's start off with that GPU. What are my options here? Well, honestly, I really like the RTX 4070 Ti Super. I went through this in our best GPU for gaming 2024 video. Again, I'll leave it linked down in the video description. At 4K, if you intend to play at 4K, then DLSS, that's where that really gets leveraged. Uh, ray tracing, this is a good card for ray tracing because 16 gigs of VRAM, 
that was the problem with the 4070 Ti, was only 12 gigs of VRAM. It wasn't the rasterized raw performance, it was artificial 12 gigabyte bottleneck. So we've kind of opened that up now with 16 gigs. And listen, 799, it's not a terrible price. To me, this is what the 4080 should have been from the beginning, about an $800 card at this level of performance with 16 gigs of VRAM. But I do wanna tell you, I went in to check the 7900 XT price and wow, Look at that, look at that, 699, that's spicy. AMD is really getting spicy here with the price cuts on the 7900C. I think they're beginning to react. They're probably seeing some initial market data on how all this is selling versus their cards. And if we see this coming in, 699, this is a good model too. The Sapphire Pulse is a very, very good model. So this could portend bigger price cuts to come by AMD in order to compete. At 699, yeah, it's it's tough to say. Let's take a look at some of the performance data here. I mean, here's the 12 game average from TechSpot. Now this is the RTX 4070 Ti Super Review. God, I, I hate the name, I love the card. You can see though, at 4K, the 7900XC does outperform it. It's not by a ton, but pretty good. Now these are really tough to run games at ultra settings. So if you turn them to high, you're gonna get a, an amazing uh, experience. Obviously you can turn on DLSS on a, a number of these titles as well. You can turn on FSR obviously for uh, 7900 XT as well. And you're gonna get pretty good performance in addition to that. And I do like DLSS and FSR upscaling at 4K. It doesn't really help at 1440p and doesn't even really exist at 1080p. The other thing I will say is really interesting if we kind of rewind a little bit, 4070 Super versus 7800 XT, three FPS difference, wow. That just shows you the 7000 series does perform better as the resolution goes up versus the 4000 series from NVIDIA. It was exactly the opposite last generation. That being said, I still like the TI Super. 70-ish FPS is pretty good. I could see someone going with the 7900 XT if you don't really care about ray tracing though. Let's punch through the rest of the build. Honestly, at this price point, Ryzen 7800 X 3D. I just, Intel just can't really compete. The 14700K, Possibly worth looking at here. It's the same price as the CPU. The motherboards are a little bit more expensive. The coolers, you need a bigger cooler. You're gonna need a bigger power supply for this. So you're gonna spend a lot of money elsewhere on it. And if you have like super high level professional production workloads out there, yeah. But honestly, if you're just an amateur or you just wanna do regular video editing, this is still an eight core CPU. This is still gonna kick some butt. 7800X3D is just really, to me, the hands down choice. It's way easier to cool. It's gonna give you higher gaming performance uh, with, with fast GPUs. And I actually think this is an appropriate level of GPU to pair the 7800X3D and just plunk down the extra 200 bucks for the CPU. For the motherboard, we're just gonna go with the MSI Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. I decided to go a little bit more premium on the motherboard. You could use one of those cheap cheaper, like $150, $130 boards. No problem with this CPU. That's the great thing about it. But I decided let's get something with a little bit more premium features to it. Looks cool. The Mac Blatt. This is the MSI Mag Tomahawk. If you like the ASUS Strix, the white one, the B650-A board out there, it's like 200 and $18 right now, $220, another good alternative. There's a number of really, really good alternatives right around 210 to about $230 out there. This is one I really like. The RAM, we went with my T-Force Delta kit. I can never get away from this kit. Now, the, it, the price has come up about $20, about $20 since I started recommending it, you know, late last year, but, it's probably because it was so much cheaper than all the others. DDR5 6000 CL30, 32 gigabyte kits out there. It's RGB, it's never done me wrong. And in fact, the last kit I got, I believe had Expo timings on it in addition to the XMP. Remember, there's no difference for, uh, for Ryzen 7000 between Intel XMP and Ryzen Expo timings. You can use either one. The boards are all set up to use either one. It's just a lookup table, basically. $109 is great, or you can go with a cheaper kit. For the cooler, I really like the Vetru V240 liquid CPU cooler. 240 mil, we used the 360 version in our 7800X3D build when it launched. Worked really well, nice and quiet. I like the look of it. That was an all white one. I went with a black theme build this time, so I just selected the black one. It worked really, really well. Kept the 7800X3D nice and cool. $65 is an insanely cheap price, two thumbs up. For the drive, I just went with something simple here, silicon powered two terabyte. Unfortunately, drives with DRAM on them are like 40 or 50 bucks more now. 
we are seeing price inflation in the SSD market hit pretty rapidly. Remember, for gaming, there's really no difference. For most of you out there, you're not going to notice the difference between a DRAMless drive like this and a drive with DRAM unless you are moving tons and tons of files out there all the time in, in a more professional setting. So I would snap up something like this, $105, while you can still get them. Listen, for the case, there's a lot of options out there right now. This is a pretty good $95 after the promo code, the Deepcool CH560. We did our uh, 7950X and 4 90 video editing build in the white version, in this case, the, the digital. So it has the digital readout on it. It's only like 20 bucks more for the digital if you want to do that. Really, really good. And, and they look amazing. It's all mesh. It comes with, these are 140 millimeter fans. These are great. If you don't like Deep Cool for whatever reason, uh, the Lee and Lee Land Cool 216, also on sale right now. I think it's like $95. Another really, really good option out there to look at. For the power supply, I went with the Deep Cool PQ850M. This is a, I believe it's B tier on the PSU Cultus list, possibly A tier. It's $99 right now for 850 watts, which is two thumbs up. PSUs, uh, some of the PSUs I had been recommending seem to have sold through during the holidays. They haven't either come back on the market. Maybe they're not coming back. We'll see. In the meantime, this is one of the models that I am keeping my eye on, especially 850 watts for $99 right now is a pretty good option. So like I said, all told $1,874.11. If you want to get a cheaper motherboard, if you want to go air cooling instead, and if you want to get the 7900 XT, that's $100 difference right there. So if you want to save a couple hundred bucks and come a little bit closer to like $1,650, you probably could do that out there. But for $1,874, you're going to get an insanely performative and amazing looking gaming PC out there, capable of pushing really high frame rates, capable of doing high end ray tracing if that's your jam, able to take advantage of all the DLSS and all the kind of great feature set out there. So I absolutely love this build. Let's jump in some great 4K options out there. And honestly, 4K gaming monitors continue to fall in price. And I absolutely love the MSI Mag 274 UPF. Now this is a 27 inch. Most of the other 4K monitors are 28 inch, so slightly larger, but 399, 399. I mean, that's the price of 240 Hertz, 1440p right now. You can get 4K 144 Hertz. Great panel here by MSI. If you do want that extra inch in the 28, the MSI Mag 281 URF, actually slightly better picture quality too, I believe. So 144 Hertz refresh rate, 449. These continue to be just such great value. Of course, we are expecting 4K 240 Hertz gaming monitors coming later this year. But if you want 1440p, 360 Hertz, I almost said 240 because 360 is just so mind blowing. Here you are, the Alienware aw 2725DF. This is an OLED 360 Hertz 1440p gaming monitor. So it's got all that innate goodness of OLED baked into it, including incredible HDR to it, incredibly immersive gameplay, and 360 Hertz. I just don't even know how they're making these things for $899. Remember, everything is linked down in the video description check out those links for current pricing and availability in your region. And if you got value out of the video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you check out our best GPU 2024 video? I'm going to put it right here. You can check it out. We go through all the GPU features, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. Which one's best for you in 2024? And we'll catch you on the next one.